Um, so prior to now, we have absolutely talked about how items are visible in Koopa, who can see what items and why. We've talked a little bit about um, like how to search items, like the difference in how items are built. So like items versus supplier items and kind of what that means. Um, and so today, I know this is a lot of time spent on items, but they're kind of important to us as procurement folks. So I, I would like to kind of go over the um, item request form and like how that relates to the items in Coupa, right? So because it seems kind of silly that there's there's a lot of information that we're requesting in the item request form. Um, but it's all necessary and it all dictates some action about that item, right? And then I really want to focus today on, so the new item request form that has been uploaded does some really cool things for us, right? So it, it basically allows us to pick the type of item we want created and then it blocks out sections of the item request form that are not necessary based on that item qualification. And then it highlights areas that are required and, and things like that. So I kind of want to go over that and like how we can all save ourselves some times and just the approach of item creation in Koopa. So I don't know if you guys know this. I'm going to share my screen so we can kind of all see. And I don't know if you guys know this, but we have about 90,000 items in Koopa right now. So like let that sink in. 90,000 items. That is like a lot, you guys, like a lot. So one of the things to kind of keep in mind as you are requesting items to be added to catalogs, finding items that you want to use on property, is that our first step at a property level is kind of twofold, right? There's like this procurement step of like, why was the item selected? Was it bid out? Does it need to be bid out? How often are we going to buy this item? You know, over the course of the year, is this an item we're going to buy every week and spend $10,000 on? And we should probably see if it, you know, makes sense for us to buy it. Is there a contracted item? So there's, there's procurement questions about the item, but kind of the second piece of that is actually once the decision is confirmed that this is the item we should be buying, how should that be put into Coupa, right? To make it easy for our end users to buy it because we've done the procurement work. So now how is the easiest way for us to kind of keep that in, in Coupa? So one of the things we can kind of ask ourselves is with 90,000 items, I feel like a lot of what we're trying to buy probably already exists in the system somewhere. And when you're looking at the item request form, notice there's now this super cool, this is like a, an, I can't believe I did that. That's the old form, you guys. Um, that's me, super prepared. Looking at the right form and everything. So here is the, the actual right form that we should be filling out. Um, now, that being said, right, there's all this information. We uploaded kind of an updated form yesterday, which you guys got a team's announcement on. So it has some additional changes and in instructions a little bit. We changed a couple things down here to make it a little bit easier to understand what we're asking for. But in the new form, this column is probably one of the most important, right? Because it does this item exist in Koopa. And if we say yes, notice how many things are blocked out or no longer necessary, right? So literally, if the item already exists in Koopa, we have to fill out five cells. Guys, five cells. So that is super fast, right? Just in terms of like how quickly we can get a form in and get it and get it submitted for approval. So I really want to focus on this today and kind of the value and how we search first. So if I want to add Red Bull to my property, yellow, yellow Red Bull, okay? 
How do I find that? So my supplier number is 46644. So I could go to the supplier items detail here. And the first step might be, right? Oh, I take it back. We have 162,000 item supplier items. Um, so I can type in nine or 64494, my supplier number, whatever I said it was. And it looks like there's another supplier that uses that number in some some rhyme or reason with this vodka. Um, I, mine, my item is not vodka. It's it's Red Bull. So how do I find Red Bull? Like what's what's my how do I find it? Right. So I don't care who we're buying it from because price other people's prices are important to me in this particular exercise. Like it's definitely useful if I for my sourcing piece. But if I want to see if the item exists, I'm going to come to the items tab, right? And I'm going to, can I search Red Bull? Can I search yellow red? I can. Is it going to pop up my options? No, because this search field is very basic and it's literally looking for the words yellow Red Bull in that order where I, I don't know if it exists in specifically another order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the advanced search feature and name contains red, right, for Red Bull and name contains bull. That way, if we put it, if someone put it in the system as bull red, red bull, one word, space, doesn't matter, the system is going to find it, okay? Because it's going to search for those two things to in the verbiage together. So you can see almost immediately, right? I'm getting lots of options. OK, some start with drinks, some start with energy. Notice this is why we're trying to get everyone on the same page when creating item numbers. Very important. Um, but I can see there's a lot of options here. So is there a way for me to kind of narrow this down even more? Absolutely. So I can add another filter here and say, well, I want a name that also contains yellow. Oh, here we go. Here's some yellow. But mine is my Red Bull tropical. Is it one of is there a size like which size is my Red Bull? Um, yellow Red Bull is also called special edition Red Bull. Um, maybe not. So you can see yellow edition. Notice yellow is not spelled out. So there's all kinds of, as you guys can see, there's all kinds of search methodology for me to find this item, okay? So once I've identified it though, and I'm like, hey, like this is exactly what I want. Um, I am gonna click on this item because what I'm looking for, right? I am gonna add, since it's not available for my supplier, I already checked that. We know I have to add this for my property. These supplier attributes down here are less important to me than these attributes up here. Like these things are the item details. These are specific to this supplier, the property who's using this supplier. So these things don't mean near as much to me as these things. So this is why we're looking at the item level information as opposed to supplier items, right? Because I'm not trying to look to see, well, does the part number for the supplier in Louisiana match my supplier part number in Blackhawk? For probably not, because we're using two different distribution methods. So when I look at this information up here, does my item match this? It's a really simple question, right? Like. Does it match this? Yeah. Am I buying it by a case? Yeah. Is it one pack size and there's 24 each and they're 8.4 ounces, which also is stated up here? Yeah. Great. This is my item. It exists. So when I go to fill out my item request form, right, I don't necessarily have to retype something here. I basically could just come here, copy this, want to use the same description, right? 
it's telling me like I'm not putting this in inventory. It is food. It's not catch weight. Um, so it's not inventory, non catch weight. It exists in Koopa. What item number? So if I'm picking the item number, it's this. In the URL, it's not any of this other stuff down here. It's this. So in this, I'm telling EPRO this is the item that I want my supplier info added to. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my form, right? And then I basically go to the three cells, the five cells down here, and I say manufacturer. Yes, I'm absolutely confirming that it's made by Red Bull. Here's the manufacturer product code. Here's the part number. Here's this, right? Because the reason we ask this stuff is because this can definitely be, we could be buying the same item just from a different manufacturer. That's fine. As long as the manufacturer isn't listed here, we don't necessarily have to use the same, like we can use the same item number, right? That's the whole idea behind this is that we're trying to consolidate and realize where we share product where we share item usage um, as a company that way obviously our corporate procurement team melissa and serene and corey um, even you guys that are regionals can actually pull usage by the item and have consistent descriptions and be able to actually tell like hey this is great we bought all of these and they're the same item just slightly different manufacturers that's something I can probably source for the company and potentially get us a better deal. We might have to switch manufacturers at some properties, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? That's that's part of that that sourcing consolidation effort that we're all a very big part of right now because we're in Coupa. Um, so that is kind of how the initial approach works in terms of like, hey, let's really try to find if my item already exists in Koopa. Not necessarily does my Cisco SUPC exist in Koopa, right? But the item itself, does it exist in Koopa? If it doesn't, then that's where this item is going to be a no and literally opens up a lot of things for us to fill out in the item request form, but they're all necessary. So when I'm in here and I'm creating an item from scratch, right? Um, I have to have a name for the item. And like we talked about to create consistency so we all know what to search for. So we all kind of have an idea of what we name things. So it makes sense when we're running reports or sending POs to suppliers. Using the na same naming convention is really important. So if you're ever questioning like what is the naming convention I should use here? In the data dictionary, it does give us not only a description really specifically <laughs> of what it should look like, but also our sample value here. So it kind of gives us an example of what it should look like. I find that this is useful not only when I'm filling out item requests, but also when I'm processing free texts. Because obviously, like free texts are at the time very, should be one off, should be very specific. But over time, if you're formatting your descriptions in this method, Coupa allows you to run reports on everything purchased. So if it's being formatted the same way, identifying things that are being purchased repeatedly that can be added to catalogs um, is a lot easier if the description is formatted the same way. So I use this for a lot more than just item request forms, but um, so that's kind of an important piece there. Um, when you are filling some of these out, if you have questions, obviously the data dictionary, we put little descriptions of kind of everything in here. Um, obviously willing to help you guys out if you have additional questions, but I kind of want to show you in terms of item creation, what this is what e-procurement does sometimes in a very more scientific Excel upload download format. This is the way I know, and I think this is a little easier to understand. So name description. So this is the supplementary description, just any additional descriptional items. This is optional. So if you don't have anything on your item request form, leave it blank and we just put a period here just to make sure that this the system knows we put something there. It's not necessary. We don't 
copy this description into here, right? It's, it's not needed. Um, the commodity is really the big thing that we select at a header level when we're creating the item. Um, manufacturer name and manufacturer part number a lot of time don't get selected at the item level, they get selected at the supplier item level. So when we're adding your supplier information, linking it to your property contracts, that's usually when it happens down here at the supplier level, not at the header level. So that makes it easier for us to find our item description and other, other quantifiers in the system. So we're not matching it at a manufacturer level necessarily. Unit of measure, this is how we buy it, whether it's catch weight or not. This is some of those optional things in the form, whether you wanna add a questionnaire, um, things like that. Then we get into pack size. So this helps us kind of determine what the pack size is. Um, some of those are optional, but this will really help break it down. Um, we put items. This is where we can attach pictures or URLs. So in the item request form, there is the image URL that's optional. I will tell you, if you didn't watch my first video on item creation form, I love this cell. It's amazing. I love putting pictures in Koopa only because our end users think they're really awesome. And it is super helpful and anything I think we can do to get end users engaged in Koopa, I am all for. Um, so that's kind of where all that goes. Inventory is also determined if it can be an inventory item or not is determined at the item level. So can this be inventoried? If it can or we want it to be, we fill out this information. Notice if the storage unit measure and the consumption unit measure are selected here, like if I'm in Charlestown and I want to wreck it out by the bottle and this is case in case, this item won't work because this item is set up to be done separately than mine. So that's where kind of consolidating and looking at what other people are doing and maybe deciding to do the same thing at your property might be a good practice. I know sometimes that's not necessarily accurate. So if you see a difference here, this item won't work for you. Um, and then we get into the supplier item. So once all that header stuff is filled out, this is where we say which supplier we buy it from, the supplier part number. This is where we put manufacturer information, manufacturer codes, where we dictate the contract that it's going to be attached to. The price, this date here, this is what flags it to be put into the bid tool. So this is what we do there. The stock status, so this is also on your item request form. You can tell the system whether it's demand, remote, special order, or stocked, and each one of those have a definition that's listed. And then item type, this is really where food book and bed book are, are really old, um, really old kind of not relevant um, types anymore. However, this might be where we haven't really discussed this, but this could be where we put things like the beverage, the new national beverage program. This is this might be where we designate whether this is a, a national beverage item or not. Um, it could be designated somewhere else, but just so you know, there are some things going on here where we can actually designate this is a contracted food item. So we know when we're requesting whether it's contracted or not from like US food. So we can actually dictate on this so our end users can see that this is contracted. Um, so this is how items are created from your form. So this is how the form kind of plays into that. Inventory is a little different. Um, when you are requesting inventory and basically all of the inventory stuff down here, um, your storage, consumption, warehouse, your aisle, your default location, all of this stuff. Um, it is done at a central level, at least initiating all of it, assigning it the first time is done at a central level. And it's done through about three different processes, which I'm not going to go in today. But just so you know, that's why most of them are file upload processes. So that's one of the reasons. Um, that it's done more centrally is because it does require the ability to download, fill out, and upload in the correct formats. Um, so it's a little bit more complicated. But 
that's why they're included in the request form so that when you're requesting the item, we not only know who should be able to see it, right? So should the warehouse, is it a warehouse item that our end users can order from the warehouse or is it a uh, order that they do direct? So all of those things kind of play into why some of the cells are necessary. Um, and that is kind of how the form translates into Coupa. Um, and why a lot of the cells are in here. Some of them are necessary and not necessary, as we talked about. Um, and then once you kind of fill out the form, so some of the information is obviously up here. So property will tell, like, do you want a direct or inventoried? Who should it belong to? The supplier, your name, all of that good jazz. This also tells, this also will flag whether the, um, the dates are necessary or not. So like if you select yes, it highlights this is necessary. If you select no, it de-highlights this is not necessary. I don't think I actually selected it. Um, but yeah, so some of these are necessary to, to the supplier information. A lot of the details down here, it's kind of a mix of like header item information and supplier item information. So that is how the form like moves into Koopa um, and why it's kind of necessary to make sure you're really checking out the items first because one it saves us time right and filling out the form it does create consistency um, and it allows a little bit easier time later on so when we are trying to be more efficient and create catalogs and um, create programs right more us all being on the same page is definitely going to help those things, I think, flow a little bit better. Uh, the last step, once you've run validation and you send this email, I just want to go over real fast. The email auto populates all three commodity managers. Please don't send it to all three because um, they don't all need to see it. Um, you should know based on your item who oversees that commodity or program. Um, Corey does everything edible or drinkable. So if you can eat it or drink it, um, that's Corey. That's not Corey if you put edible stuff in it. So just, you know. Um, and then Melissa and Serene kind of split all the other categories. Um, if you're not sure, ask. It's always a good practice. Um, but that's just the last little thing here. And then you take your completed form and attach it and redo your property ID and then you're good to go and you send this in. Um, once it gets approved, it gets sent to ePro and they add it to the system and you will then have an item you can share with your end user and say, hey, this is now cataloged. You know, please stop free texting it. That'd be great. Um, and that's kind of the end of the process. So hopefully this has helped kind of give some why behind some of these columns um, and uh, how they look in Coupa and how to search items in Coupa so that we can kind of all be a little bit more on the same page.